Greetings and hallucinations to all you folks out there. I've got a strategic facepalm for you today. Any information following this intro may or may not be completely accurate, and you may take any advice that follows at your own peril. So let's go ahead and get started with this. This one got sent to me. Uh, actually, I'm not going to tell you who sent it to me. It is, of course, a strategic facepalm, as mentioned before, and it takes place between the negative 100 and 500 rank range. So obviously, we are going to get some some stellar examples of beginning builds and awesome gameplay. Let's go ahead and check in with the players, see who we got, and then we will dive into the action. This is a free-for-all. We've got Bob Saget taking Cybern in the north. He is actually doing a reasonably respectable starting build. Two P-Gens, four mechs, and running for the Hydro across to the edge there. We've got two land factories going down for Death the Kid. He is going UEF and he's actually dropping a mech marine. We'll have to see what kind of early aggression he has planned with that handy dandy little unit there. We've got Double Land going down for Atomic Nuke as well, who is building a buttload of power and going for the Hydro as well. Hopefully he will have enough mass to make up the gap because I don't see enough build in that. Well, maybe that AC you can get it. We'll have to see. He is going the efficient route and walking all the way to the mass extractor to build it. On the left, we have another Cybern. That makes uh, two Cybern, one Seraphim, and one UEF. No Aeon. That is going to be Matt Bazooka, who is obviously going to win this game because he is his own Bazooka Tube, and that is by far the most explosive thing that has been made so far in this game. Seven mass for per tick for those two guys, and then we've got one per tick for Atomic Nuke, who has yet to build a mass extractor and is trying to build no less than four mass extractors at the same time for maximum effectiveness, because obviously more mechs is going to get you more mass. Come on, you can do it! One sixteenth of a mechs at a time, and there it is. And uh, let's see what Death the Kid is doing. He is building... Two, so not quite as overpowered on the eco as his teammate is, but he is still laying down some of that there mass. Okay, <laughs> everyone's low on mass. Well, you may be, but not necessarily everyone else, because some people have five times your income at the moment. Let's go ahead and bump up the speed. Looks like Mad Bazooka is interested in all of those civilian structures in the middle. There is a point defense. There are two point defense, and he is going to hightail it out of there. This would, uh, seriously speaking, this would actually be an excellent opportunity to put your ACU on hold fire, kill one point defense, capture the other, and then capture some of the things in the middle, because a T2 power generator and a T1 radar is not a bad deal for going into capture. Matt Bazooka is going to cap that mechs. He is going to actually get both on the outside edges of his base, so he is going to be at a massive advantage versus his opponents. We do have a little engineer worried about that big boulder, because that big boulder must be gotten no matter what. There is mass in them there, Hills, and we got to get it under our belts so that we can build awesome things. Forget about the Hydro, that does not pay for itself in the long run. We definitely need more mass in the here and now. Bomb Saget is building a lot of land factories. He is currently on a 50 mass stall, and he is trying to get down, let's see, an anti-air turret, uh, point defense, and two factories. And I don't think there are any air units anywhere in the game, because no one has an air factory. Correct. Matt Bazooka has got four land factories going down as well, and he actually has perfect, absolutely flawless power balance and as soon as I opened my mouth he took it away from me he started reclaiming like you're supposed to do and uh, that was the end of it right then and there let's go ahead and bump up the speed just a hair more we're gonna zip through this game and see what else it has to offer us we've got a couple of mass storages going down in the back Obviously, adjacency is for chumps. You want your storage in the back where it's safe and sound so that no one can come and steal it from you. Always remember, when you have tanks and artillery, to put the tanks in front of the artillery while the artillery is killing the point defense. Otherwise, the point defense might notice your artillery in the back and kill it, and that would be bad. This is a nice little piece of aggression here. Matt Bazooka is a little low on health, but he has a bunch of Mantis to back him up. So obviously he is going to be totally fine. He is going to reclaim the tanks that died, lay down a bit of damage on Atomic Nuke, and he is going to forsake his plans of trying to take out this little expansion here. Maybe he can get the kill. Maybe he can get the kill. No! 
Two Thams coming in for the rescue, but while he is distracted, there's going to be a little bit of a raid on his base. Not quite enough to take out a mass extractor, but Purple is going to exert a little bit of force on the rest of the territory. Bob Saget actually doing fairly well for himself. He did get two of the expansions, of which there are four. So he has like 30% map control all to himself. Maybe even 40%. We'll, we'll give him 40%. I'm feeling generous at the moment. On the south side, Atomic Nuke still building power. He's got 200 income and he is overboard by 110. But obviously we need <laughs> more power. Atomic Nuke, that mechs is our boundary. We stick to it. Actually, that mechs belongs to you. You should definitely be a little more aggressive about your territorial boundaries. Because this is almost... <laughs> I hate to even make this comparison. This is almost like Germany is like, I'm going to take this because it's mine. And everyone else is like, okay, that's the new boundary. You just stay there. I don't think he's just going to stay there. You give him an inch, he's going to take a mile. Although it actually, oh, nope, nope. Engineer? Yep, he, he is taking the mile. He's going to come get reclaim on the other side of the mech. So be aware, you might be about to be assimilated by the Borg. Death the Kid is getting a T2 Mass Extractor upgrade. He has almost got it complete. So he's just going to kind of sit over here in his turtly little business. And Eco Whore. Although it looks like he is not the whoriest of the Ecos because Bob Saget has a T2 Mex as well. And we have one over here for Matt Bazooka. So he's actually a little late to the party. Matt Bazooka almost to a second one. Well done on you, good sir. Looks like there is a second in the works for Bob Saget as well so that was abandoned we now have a t2 mechs there we have a t2 hq online looks like atomic nuke is going to be the first person to field a t2 combat unit i see a t2 engineer over there i see a t2 factory down here which has just spit out an engineer but he is going to get an ill shiva out three ill shivas before anybody else so if he were able to get those out in the field somewhere. You might actually be able to do some damage because I don't believe anybody has overcharge. No one has built an energy storage as of this point in the game. It looks like there is finally going to be an assault on the middle. Why claim that T2P gen when you could obliterate it from the face of the earth? I hate to see that go, even though he may... Well, nope, nope, nope. He is going to obliterate the wreck as well with that overkill on the Lobo fire. And so he is not going to get any mass out of the proposition either. Well, wish you better luck next time. There is a T1 radar down for our little friend down in the corner, Atomic Nuke. Hopefully that will let him use the superior range on those Il Shivas. I knew I was forgetting something. Matt Bazooka apparently wants a radar for himself. And again... No one has any air units. I am flabbergasted as to how there are not any air, is not any air yet. I would have thought that there would be some kind of T2 bomber troll happening, but apparently these guys are content to stick to the land forces. Got a T2 power generator going up for Bob Saget, who has two T2 HQs because more is always better 100% of the time, no matter what you're talking about. Death the Kid, let's take a look over here. He is actually overflowing on both resources, or was until I mentioned it. Cast of the... or Curse of the Caster. Cast of the Cursor. I should cast a Cursor. I have a Cursor. What am I rambling on about? Atomic Nuke is going to get down a couple of T2 point defense, which provide awesome adjacency to the radar system. And then we've got two more point defense and a TMD up here on this side. So, he is going to get a little bit of protection down in his base. Obviously, he needs it since all of the combat units are going towards the north side. Again, front your artillery with tanks so that you can protect them. And then that is going to go down, I believe. Nice little raid there. Going to get enough combat units rammed up into the back there that... Uh, those factories and Hydra will be eliminated. Engineers finishing off that Cerberus turret. Who's going to be able to lay down a little bit of damage in that direction if it needs to. But for now, it is just going to sit silent. Standing guard over all of the wrecks, which may or may not be reclaimed later in the game. We'll just have to see how that goes. All those engineers, all of that stall trying to build those point defenses. There is a glorious amount of mass just waiting to be reclaimed. There it is. 
one engineer reclaiming with about 10 building because that is the best possible distribution of build power by a long shot. We've got a T2 power generator going down for Death the Kid. He is sitting on 180 income, but by golly, he is going to get that T2 gen up if it is the last thing he does. Ah, there's our first air unit. That is going to be his air cover for the base. Since it is airborne, it will be able to reclaim air units, and that will let it uh, defend the base from anything that might come and threaten it. Mongeese are down now. They are going to attempt to kill a T1 point defense, and I believe they will succeed. The high arcing grenade fire is going to be able to get over that little bit of terrain there. Mongeese actually have a surprisingly high arc on their firing pattern when you're talking about a unit that's way, way, way far away. Unit that does not have a good firing pattern is the Cerberus turret. But since we're on a pretty level playing field here it's not a big deal there goes the hop lights they are going to be tearing into that ACU which is trying to get a point fence down but it's gonna to have to run for the hills 4,000 health and dropping like a rock but he is gonna retreat into a vast quantity of point defense actually Mad Bazooka is gonna to have to back up just a little bit there in order not to danger his ACU I've got gray if you can take light purple let's see that is this guy to uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, death the kid that is these two so are they teamed up now they are teamed up how dare you this is a free-for-all you violate the very spirit of the game but then again we've got the top two players by themselves and the bottom two teamed up so maybe it's not that bad I mean cumulatively they're only a couple hundred points over or a couple of thousand points over what the top player is so maybe they actually do need that boost okay this is baseception which is the strongest base when it's all about that base you add a fire base to your base and then your base can protect your base when the units come they will not be able to overcome this vast quantity of base we've got four point defense right snugging up against the hill so that obviously units on the other side of the hill will not be able to fire at the point defense because that is how you want to set up your firing patterns there is plenty of TMD there and instead of building a shield the ACU is going to go build some more T2 power which actually does make a little sense I am not gonna rip on that because he does need power to run shields it's currently sitting on 280 which is obviously not enough income to take care of that got a shield gen down for Bob Saget he is going to try to shred all of the units in the middle but thank thankfully the terrain is going to get in his way horrendously there's a couple of pillars on the front nicely matched against the vipers that are streaming out of the factory because vipers do not do very well versus direct fire units I I am actually appreciative of death the kid he has not built a single point defense as of yet so not the turtle player that I thought he was going to be actually I take it back he's a turtler there's a t1 point defense I see it all clearly now you cannot hide Cerberus turrets do not do much damage by themselves, but when you get enough of them in one spot, you know, they actually do all right. The enough of them being six plus, which might kind of defeat the purpose. Those artillery moving forward to eliminate the obviously most dangerous target, that shield generator, and then backing up, taking one point defense as collateral. Atomic saying, I made a mistake. I'm not entirely sure what that mistake was, but uh, we'll just have to take it for granted that he knows what he's saying I'm the best air fac right now uh, yes he has three looks like we are getting a little bit of mobile flack out for purple even though there are still no visible air units he is going to go ahead and get that anti-air up just in case of a snipe out of the blue Viper spam is gonna push that ACU back just a little bit as it was trying to get down some t1 point defense to protect against the Cerberus turrets. Stealth over the air bases. That is really smart because then you can build loads and loads of air and it will not be sighted because obviously there is nothing that could possibly have vision radius right next to those air factories. Air units will just come out and drop in a nice little pretty pattern right there. So many T2 engineers, good lord. 40 mass income. 
you need a lot of build power to spend that much. He's got three Vipers out on this side, one of which unfortunately is in range of the Cerberus turrets on the south side. Shielding going down, strengthening that position, turning this into a veritable stronghold between the two cliff faces. We've got four Cerberus turrets over here, three more, and then six going for more. So many Cerberus. So many. How many heads does that many Cerberus have? That's my question. The Elshavas were dancing in a merry little circle right there. I'm not entirely sure what that jig was all about, but apparently the whole town was out for the big hurrah. Although they are happy to go back home now. Kind of getting back towards the gray side. I'm going to go attack gray. Well, that might actually not be a bad idea because there is a Gunther down on the field. Usually T2... Artillery is a bad idea, but when you're on a map this size, holy hell, you can wipe clean two bases without any effort whatsoever. So hey, build all the Gun Gunthers you want to, my friend, because they are actually going to pay for themselves on this map. Atomic Nuke walking over to build that much-needed shield over those point defenses. I love how... Um, we go from stalling by 200 with 180 income to overflowing 2,000. And there is no in-between. Because balance is for chumps. Unit balance, eco balance, stance balance, none of that. Well, we now have Cerberus turrets pounding away at this pillar, and I'm not entirely sure why they weren't able to hit it. Ah, that was the very, 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 very edge of the shield, just barely making contact with the point where the Cerberus turrets were trying to hit the tank. But now it is safe once more. We finally have some combat air. There are T1 bombers coming out. Maybe they'll be used versus the Vipers that are getting spammed out unceasingly by Bob Saget. What is he going to build to respond to that? We've got a support and a T2 HQ. There is a single mobile missile launcher out. I don't think a flapjack does very well versus a viper. Although, then again, snakes don't particularly like pancakes, so maybe it won't target it. I'm not entirely sure. We've got two tack launchers going down. Maybe we'll see a commander snipe. Who knows? We've got a little bit of shielding up in this base and a lot of shielding up in this base, so I don't think those are going to be super accessible to that kind of thing. Ooh. Damage going down on the T2 power generators. We can't have that now. We cannot have that. And here, my friends, is the epitome of a firebase war. We have four, five Vipers attacking a base that literally has no direct su fire support. None. Whatsoever. Anywhere. The ACU is in the back of the base. There are no tanks. There are no point defense. There is a shield and an ever-increasing amount of buzz kills, which are really failing to kill anyone's buzz because Viper's OP. Atomic, I am wearing gray down. You know what? That is actually kind of accurate. Hoplite's coming in, but unfortunately they're going to move in a bit too far. And that, my friends, is what happens when Hoplites run into point defense and Ilshavas, which are essentially walking T1 point defense. They die. That is what happens. They die. The attack launchers are built, not quite loaded. Gonna have to wait and see what happens with those. Hopefully they can actually launch something before they die. There are flapjacks being built. The sparring match between Cybran and UEF is still continuing. I do not understand how the point defense have not arrived in this situation, but apparently this is gonna be a standoff between Vipers and Flapjacks under shields with TMD for both sides. TMD being built by Bob Saget now as well. Oh, Mad Bazooka walked into point defense. Good lord. That was a lot of Cerberus fire. How many Cerberus does it take to kill a Cybern ACU? My friends, the answer is a dozen and even dozen. Of course, if you count these back here, which we're not firing, how many Cerberus does it take to protect a base? 20 or thereabouts. We'll let him have that one. So immediately, Atomic is going to move into the new territory, secure that from the evil clutches of Bob Saget, who must be suppressed at all costs for the sake 
of the little animals. Atomic Nuke is going to continue building T2 artillery, even though the only person completely in range of his artillery onslaught is going to be his one and only ally in this game. He is barely going to be able to reach the first bank of Cerberus turrets, so I suppose it is worth it to build three or more stationary T2 artillery in order to take out an equivalent number of T2 point defense. Where is... Oh, I understand what's going on here. This is a no-man's land. Obviously, you need to keep a buffer zone between you and your enemy, and building mechs and getting reclaim would just instigate a disaster coming down upon your own head. So you should leave this completely alone. But it looks like Death the Kid is going to go against the common knowledge. He is going to try to get a little bit of reclaim. Maybe that will work out for him. We'll just have to see see how that goes. I think I have developed a case of the hiccups. All of this excitement is making my breathing patterns work funnily. Cerberus turrets going down. And it looks like the mongoose and pillars and every other manner of combat unit are going to go down as soon as they come around the hill face to face with the fearsome vipers. Looks like the Vipers have abandoned their quest to take down the firebase over here. Decided that their power is much better put to use going after the south side because Ilshabas would never come and try to kill us. Oh wait, I think they are. It looks like those Ilshis are going to get in reach and absolutely tear the face off of the front row of Vipers. Maybe they'll be able to milk a little bit of that face for some anti-venom to heal up those wounds that might be inflicted later, but uh, nope, they're just going to pull back. And again, no reclaim. Because no one needs reclaim. We have plenty of mass. I mean, if there's nothing that you can't build, if there's anything you can build that costs more than 58 mass per tick, you don't need it. You should learn to be content with your lot in life. Let's go ahead and bump the speed up once again because I sense a turtle coming on. Looks like we're going to end this with a standoff between groups of stationary T2 artillery. Who isn't negative mass? Well, no one needs to be negative mass. We're, we're, oh, okay. Winner! That is roughly, well it was, roughly 500% negative on mass income. We've got about 120, 130% negative, and then we've got about 300% negative. So I, I'm probably off on my math there because I can't math, but whatever, you get the point. Thankfully, there is no more TMD going down. The amount of T1 bombers being built by the single land factory is actually kind of awesome. They keep trying to do damage against this side and not quite succeeding. There's more shielding going down. Obviously that is needed to protect from the bombers that may or may not arrive momentarily. And there is a T3 power generator going down because you always need more power, even when you're overflowing by 200 per tick. Why not just build a storage and let your power float a little? Because you can have more power and more shields, always more. I bet he's an American. Yeah, he's got to be an American. What is the solution to mobile missile launchers? My friends, I think we have found it. Bigger mobile missile launchers. Spearheads have hit the field, loading their triple barrage of missiles into the barrel that is pointed directly at Bob Saget's firebase. Look at the barrage hitting those shields. Spearhead specifically designed as a base breaker. They take two TMD to kill each missile and they fire them three at a time in order to overwhelm whatever defenses you may have. Behold the melting power of the Spearhead. And he is pumping them out right and left very, very quickly. He's got a T3 mass extractor under his belt getting him that extra income and another up there and a kennel for adjacency that kennel is going to consume much less mass as it's building things because it was built next to the t3 mass extractor 
And Spearhead's not working so well in a full frontal assault. The Vipers are obviously going to trump these Spearheads one-on-one, -on -one, point blank range. But there is still a group in the back that will be able to bring up some fire against them. The T2 artilleries have been redirected towards Death the Kid. Maybe they will be able to kill those spearheads, although there is a lot of shielding in between them and the target. The TMD on this side is helping a little bit versus the Vipers, although not too terribly much. And now there is getting to be enough TMD that is starting to slow down the spearheads. That was a devastating artillery shot. Killed off five, six buzz kills and more going down to the Vipers. The TMD wall has been broken. Missiles are getting through without any trouble whatsoever. So this is going to end up being very, very bad for Death Kid. Why not build some straight up combat units? Come on, T3 Mobile Artillery. Build some Percivals. There's almost no point defense left. There are no tanks. There's no T1 point defense. There's no air. He can't do a dang thing against a single Titan. Build a Titan. It would do very, very well. I guarantee you this. Looks like we do have a T3 factory for Atomic Nuke, which is kind of repetitively redundant now that I think about it. He is building strategic bombers because what better way to end a game than with strats? Of course, he could shank his partner in the kidney with those. If he chose to do so, he could just break his alliance as soon as Bob Saget is taken care of and kill Death the Kid. That would be a brutal playing against with his friends. That was a mixed metaphor if I've ever heard one. Use your teammate to obliterate your opponent and then while they're in a weakened state, stab him in the back. It is not Annihilation. I believe it is Assassination because all of the stuff disappeared when that ACU exploded over there. Are these guys still teamed up? They are. Light Purple Run! Apparently it was too long to type Bob Saget. Light Purple is way less characters and way easier to type. If you can get his ACU out of shield, he will die. That was a feint! <laughs> All right, he's out of the shield. He has no more shield, to be accurate. There is only one left in the back of the base. Everything else has been obliterated by the spearheads. Is that fire on the Yolshevas now? Yes, it is. The alliance has shifted. Now Bob Saget is on a team with Atomic Nuke. This is kind of hilarious because Atomic Nuke is just sitting on his corner of the map getting stronger and stronger and stronger as the top two players just kind of beat themselves into each other head first, colliding again and again, goose eggs growing in every direction, limbs splayed out. I believe there may be seizures involved and still they keep going. Goodness gracious alive. Sam's ripping those T1 bombers to shreds overkill akin to swatting a gnat with a sledgehammer. Why are you called Mermita and Sledgehammer? Would have been perfect for that comparison. And that ACU is going to run for the hills, quite literally. Actually, he's running for the valley between the hills, but you know what, we'll give him that. He does have a couple of mechs back here, one mechs rather, and he's going to build some shielding, so maybe he'll be able to secret his ACU away and survive to finish this fight out. We're now up to five strap bombers in the south corner and a handful of ASF. There go the bombers. There's the ACU and Death the Kid is gone. Out of here. Adios, good sir. Bob Saget. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Boom! He is gone. Atomic Nuke winning the game through sheer force of attrition. Well done, good sir, well done. Playing the entire field against themselves, waiting for Matt Bazooka to walk into point defense and then letting the other two weaken themselves to the point where you could swoop in for the victory. Alrighty, guys, that is it. That is the Blasted Rock free-for-all. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.